So, Ken, you have done um, some pretty important reporting here uh, for the Young Turks Network. And these are documents that have been um, obtained uh, by you folks. They were marked law enforcement sensitive and for official use only. These are FBI's uh, FBI documents. First off, let's just start with this. Like, what what are these uh, documents? What what exactly um, um, are are they? Are they in just a, an institutional form? And then let's talk about what's in them. So these documents were produced by FBI headquarters, um, and they include um, the counter terror priorities. Each year, they release a formal document that is the result of extensive, um, you know, planning, uh, discussion, and decision making to. Uh, kind of set forth what are the major, usually the list is about 12, around around maybe 15 priorities long each year. And they sort of decide not just what they're going to focus on, but also what they're going to focus their resources, uh, you know, manpower and um, intelligence gathering, attention, things like that, too. And so um, for this counter-terror um, priorities list, I got their priorities list from fiscal year 2020, 2019, and 2018. So it gives you a really nice sort of a snapshot of what the Bureau's priorities under President Trump have been. And um, it had been reported previously that one of their priorities was, quote, black identity extremists. And that's really what uh, piqued my interest in this, because um, when that was reported, that obviously, you know, triggered a great deal of concern. But there wasn't a whole lot known about um, the context in which um, this black identity extremist priority was conceived. And so what these documents show um, is what exactly um, their intelligence gathering around black identity extremists were, where um, that group as a priority stands in relation to other counterterror priorities, right. um, and just you know general context, which was which was missing um, uh, prior so, to the story. So we should, you know, I mean, so just so that people can understand, I mean, this I imagine um, the FBI has been doing this for um uh, uh quite a while um and they oh, yeah. produce this document every year and um they must get somewhat granular as you uh, you know if we're talking about uh 15 um sort of like institutionalized counterterrorism threats i mean what what constitutes terrorism in there in you know is that part of this document or is that just simply a principle that exists within the counterterrorism division of the FBI or, 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 or what? It's not defined um, in these documents, but um, within the intelligence community, um, this sort of general definition for it is violence um, undertaken for sort of political goals or political purposes generally. Uh, so that's sort of the, uh, I would say that's the umbrella definition that the intelligence community uses. And that's interesting. And, and, you know, when I hear stuff like this, I uh, hearken back to during the Bush administration years where uh, at one point uh, radical vegans were put on this list uh, because, uh, you know, um, or, 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 or a list similar, I guess, uh, because they had been protesting out in front of a, a honey baked ham uh, factory. And uh, there was some talk that maybe they could, I don't know, uh, do something uh, violent um, uh, because of this, uh, because they were radical vegans. But um, this black identity politics, like what extremists, like what? I'm not even sure I understand what that means. What does that mean? Black identity extremism. Well, it seemed like until uh, you know these documents, um, n- nobody had a really you know uh, detailed understanding of what that was. But according to the documents, and what's astonishing to me is that they specifically cite the uh, Ferguson protests uh, following the killing of um, Michael Brown um, by, you know, a law enforcement officer, um, Darren Wilson. Um, They specifically cite that as the genesis of um, the quote unquote black identity extremists. So I was surprised that they would draw that connection to, um, you know, protest movements that were overwhelmingly peaceful. um, And not just that they would do that, but that they would, um, you know, put that into a document that very well could get leaked and, and they, you know, might have to face uh, political consequences in it. And that did happen, of course. Um, so I was, a, I was a bit surprised that they, because uh, ordinarily with these documents, um, it, these are wide distribution within the Bureau. Um, and of course, since uh, these are um, law enforcement sensitive, they're not given to the public. But I mean, a lot of FBI, you know, agents and analysts 
see these things. So it, it's not like a, you know, it's not like it's a compartmented program that only a few people have access to. They had to know that um, a large number of people were going to see this. So it was a bit surprised that they chose that language um, because if you look at um, how they defined white supremacists, which is another um, counterterror priority, they don't cite uh, you know any protest movements as their genesis. So I found that um, concerning. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, let's let's tease this out now. Wh- at what point? Um, when we talk about the Ferguson uh, protests, uh, we're, t- we're talking about events that predated the Trump administration, right? And you only have documents from 18, 19, and 20. So presumably they're uh, written in 17, 18, and 19, the, those documents, right? I mean, they're doing it for the, next, for the next coming year, I guess. I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong. But so do we have a sense of whether that—this na- that th- is not— a function of of the Trump administration, or is it? I mean, because what they're talking about, it sounds to me, is like the Black Lives Matter movement, right? I mean, because when we, if you were to ask yeah. me, like, what movement came out of uh, Ferguson, and what came out of the um, right. the the, I, I would tell you, Black Lives Matter. It, it, it seems like this is a euphemism. Yeah, and um, I, I, I'm sorry, but there's so many pages I, I can't recall, but I think they mentioned Black Lives Matter as well, um, as I recall. And I would you know, encourage listeners to click through the documents. I embed that um, in the PDF. But uh, certainly, if you read um, the context that they provide, um, citing Ferguson, that is absolutely the impression that one gets. I don't see how someone could, could, could um, you know, read these documents and, and not, get, not, not get that impression. But is there and then and then the other question. So so we don't know when this designation materialized. We only know right now because we only have the documents from uh, 18, 19, 20 <clears throat> that it is spoken in relation to uh, Ferguson. But we don't know that if this was a a a, a new designation that occurred contemporaneously with the Ferguson protests shortly after the Ferguson protests or if they were, if this designation cropped up in 2018. That's correct. Um, you know, a big part of the problem is they don't release these things. And actually, um, before uh, the um, ACLU and uh, other nonprofits had tried to, uh, you know, file Freedom of Information Act requests uh, and even litigated them, and the Bureau refused to produce them. So it's very hard for us to get insight into um, what preceded it. But I would not be surprised if this... Um, would, was not actually something that happened under Obama for the simple reason that when black identity extremists, the term was first reported in foreign policy, I believe in either 2017 or early 2018, it precipitated a you know big um, controversy. And um, that sort of culminated in um, Senate Democrats um, uh, speaking to, uh, you know, in a, in a formal Senate, uh, you know, hearing the FBI director who assured them that he had gotten rid of um, that designation and what these documents show is that um, the constituent parts of that designation, the definition, the criteria that they use to you know, describe what black identity extremists are, they just moved that under a new term and they kept basically all of those constituent um, parts. So while what um, the FBI director was telling the um, Senate was narrowly true that they technically, yes, they changed the you know um, formal name that you would see on the one page list of priorities. If you actually click on the priority and look at what constitutes that, it's all the same stuff. So, okay. I, so know, wait, hard let to... me see if I can just understand what you're saying. So in, uh, 2017, there were, uh, Democrats who were upset at their awareness of a term being used. Uh, was it black identity extremists was the term at the time? The Senate, or the Congress had brought this up a number of times, but this culminated just last last month, like weeks before I got this, in um, the Senate having a formal hearing where they just kind of say, why are we doing this? All these white supremacist attacks are happening. And it was Cory Booker. Um, you know, there's video. I, you can see you can see parts of this. Um, and, you know, you have the um, FBI just telling them straight up, yep, we got rid of it. It's not there anymore. And that just seems incredibly disingenuous. Okay, when so... You look- Okay, I see. So the complaints came very recently. They they got rid of the term black identity extremist. And you're saying that they came up with a different one? Or what was the one that they supposedly got rid of? Uh, and they just recreated the category under a different name? Yep. So now they have a new term. It's called racially 
um, motivated extremists. But then within that, they um, end up compl- conflating um, white supremacists and um, the uh, black identity extremists. So they just put the new thing under a kind of neutral sounding term, but it's the same thing. And, um, you know, in my view, to put that alongside, um, you know, a uh, counter terror threat that has actually killed a bunch of people, well, <laughs> you know, recently. Yeah, let's recently. take a break here, okay? Because now, because we, we need to move on from the. Well, let's talk about the legitimacy of actually having the, the, the what we're talking about is, is this even never mind the term? Is this a legitimate category and one that you can actually put on the same list as a category that seems to be literally far more dangerous? Um, but let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more. With Ken Klippenstein about this uh, piece that he has uh, written for the Young Turks about these leaked FBI documents revealing the Bureau's priorities under Donald Trump. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio.